Hi, welcome to the small shed. Today I'm going to get the dust extraction fixed, even if it kills me. Now the problem is, uh, if I don't fix it, it's going to kill me anyway with all the dust and bits in the atmosphere. It's getting all over all the other tools and it's just a pain to work in here if I'm doing any cutting or anything like that that's throwing dust into the air. The little fan that I put in that cleans the air is working well, uh, but I just don't want it to get up in the air in the first place. So. We're going to finally do the rearrangement that I was talking about a couple of weeks ago and the first thing I've got to do in that is dig out the vacuum extractor that, with the cyclone on it that I built and just drop it down by about 30 or 40 mil so that it will fit level with all the other work surfaces in the place and then we can just get it all plumbed in and see if we can get it working properly. So for anyone that missed the previous explanation or fell asleep, um, this whole unit is going back down the other end where I originally was going to put it and time and usage have sort of come up with an ideal place to put things and this didn't turn out to be the right one. What's also become apparent is what I didn't think was important which was the height of it. Um, is a nuisance in that you can't put anything long across all of the workbenches because they're all that set at 900 high and this one is at 965. Now I can alleviate some of that by taking the, the casters off it because they're not doing a great deal and it will slide perfectly well on the floor on the aluminium runners um, or the plywood bottom that will give me another 40 mil so I'm looking for about 25 mil drop in this height right now I've hit the first problem uh, because I'd made that front panel with a fairly thin top rail there's not an easy way to just take 25 mil off that height wise um, I can take the panel off it is glued on and it would mean making a complete new front panel um, not an insurmountable problem or I could take you know 5mm off the top and 10mm off the bottom I might get away with it but it's a little bit of a poor solution I think so that doesn't leave me much option the cyclone itself can't really be shortened in height without a fairly massive rebuild so that only leaves the amount of room between the where this vacuum sits it's got a fairly deep filter on it that's about 165-170mm plus a little bit on that rim, 10mm there, about 180mm deep from where it sits on this rim uh, and there's a, uh, an outlet below it which is 210 so I've got about 30mm in there to play with so I think the actual answer is to take the top off this part of the cyclone which isn't glued on anyway, I left it for access and then just cut this top box down by 25mm and that should solve the problem for me fortunately I've just realised it wasn't glued it's um, mastic that I've put on to seal the enclosure not quite the problem I thought it might be. It's a matter of breaking the seal on the mastic on the top. Now there's a couple of options for cutting the top off. Um, ideally, just the box itself, I'd put on circular saw and run it through against the fence and take 25mm off there. Um, but I've also got the cyclone attached by double-sided foam tape to seal it again from uh, getting air leakage and that is also quite a problem to undo so I think I'm 
what I might do is just get the track saw and pop the blade on 25mm down and go around the four sides. It's fairly stable like that, so we'll do it that way, I think. Reseal the top with cork about this point. The microphone on the camera battery packed up, so I've had to do it uh, as a voiceover afterwards. But top was screwed back on, and then I took the casters off, which was intended to give me the extra 40 mil of depth. You'll note that the um, domes on the screws going into the aluminium section were slightly raised by about six or seven mil. And that was going to cause me a problem not only with damage to the floor but with additional height again. So I took those out and got a force and a bit and just put a slight relief in the bottom of the plywood. And that seems to have solved that problem. Next thing I'd got an issue with with the dust extraction was that depth of the tube going into the cyclone. It needed to be about 150mm longer. So I got a piece of plastic tube and fitted that onto the bottom of the extract and that's pushed it further down in and should help with the dust extraction. And the whole thing now clamped back up and it seems to be exactly the right sort of depth that will clear things on the workbench. Now moving anything around in the shed is always a nightmare. I've taken the mobile workbench out but you can see already that just by moving one of the MFT3 workbench items forward, moving the vacuum in by the door, that now means I'm two or three units away from a door. Just to clear a small corridor down the back of the MFT to slide the sander and planer along into this corner where it can then reside and then I can put the rest of the stuff back but it's just caused again the usual carnage total lack of any space in here so here we are at least probably a year on from when I'd hoped to getting the ducting ready to go um, I have changed the layout a bit so it's meant that I've to redo some of these sections but the beauty of it is that it does click together a bit like Lego so I'm just going to take that piece out put a longer one in and then I'm going to use some white tape to just seal every junction um, to stop any air leakage through the pipes at their junctions We'll hook it up to the cyclone and see how it works, or if it works even. This is the tape I'm using, it's just a very thin PVC white tape and that will, it's got a certain amount of stretch in it so you can pull it taut over the joint and it'll pull itself down to follow any sort of changes in level and things smooths in nicely it just gives it a nice finished joint and hopefully that will then give us what we need so here we are finally must be almost a year on now since I started this We've got the vacuum hooked up, we've got the outlets fitted, all the joints taped up. Um, I've done away with the blast gates that I was going to make. They're just over complicated and unnecessary. Um, they were causing far more problem than they were 
going to solve when in fact the simplest way is to get a four inch outlet stopper plumbing fitting and push that on tightly and that gives me the airtight seal I need and um, for the normal hoses at the moment I'm using just the standard hookup that I get from um, record power but I have got another little trick up my sleeve for hopefully hooking the vacuum in slightly differently for the smaller fittings uh, I'll worry about that another day but at the moment it's all connected up it works and that was the whole aim of the exercise I can finally get the little vax vacuum out of the shed so the finished result is that the vacuum nozzle works well and seems to pick up quite adequately anything on the floor we'll try it out with chips and things on the four inch later on and in addition the cyclone is now working much better you can see the dust coming in there spinning around and dropping down into the bottom box and again when that box is half full I'll have a look at the top and see how much dust there is in the top if any. Well I'm really pleased I've got that done it seems to be working okay it needs a bit of fettling I'm sure around the edges and a bit of uh, checking to find out if there are any leaks anywhere in the system but it seems to be doing what I wanted it to do so um, at long last I've got that sorted I need to now connect all the tools up so I can actually start and get the environment a bit cleaner when I'm cutting timber and metal um, but that'll be for the future. I hope you enjoyed the video. Look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.